Respected ulama, my respected elders, and my brothers, and my sisters, and my little ones. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After praising the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations on Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I begin as always by first thanking you, my whole, this opportunity to convey the message of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I pray to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah accept these efforts of yours in listening to this message. As I pray to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah accepts these efforts of mine in delivering this message. My young friends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ نُزُّلَةِ Those who believe and do good deeds, they will receive Jannatul Firdaus for their entertainment. In Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ Allah has purchased from the believers their lives, their wealth, their properties. And what will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give these believers in return? For their lives and the properties, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give. بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him Jannah in return. In Surah Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ For the true believer who feared standing before his Lord, refrained from evil and sin, fulfilled his purpose in life, fulfilled the rights of Allah and the rights of makhluk, creation, he will receive two gardens in paradise. In Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تِلْكَ الْجَنَّةُ الَّتِي نُورِثُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا مَنْ كَانَ تَقِيَّةِ Such is the Jannah that we shall give as inheritance to those of our servants who were muttaqeen, who were God-fearing, who were righteous. In Surah Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَنُدَخِلُهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْحَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا Those who believe and after believing perform good deeds. We will give them gardens under which rivers flow and they will remain in these gardens forever and ever and ever. My young friends, the Quran is full of verses like this in which the true believers who believe in Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and fulfill their purpose in life by being obedient to Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam time after time in the Quran Allah promises these believers that they will receive Jannat al-Firdaus for their entertainment. Open the books of a hadith and you will find the exact same pattern. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sallal bardain dakhal al jannah. Whoever offers his fajr prayer and asr prayer, he will enter paradise. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man yadman li ma bayna lihyei wa ma bayna faghidai, adman lahu al jannah. Whoever gives me a guarantee of the thing between his cheeks and the thing between his thighs, then I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give him guarantee that he will receive Jannah in return. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man kana akhiru kalamihi la ilaha illa Allah, dakhal al Jannah. Whoever's last words before he leaves this world are, La ilaha illa Allah, there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, dakhal al Jannah, he will also enter paradise. Muslim, I know, ashu salam, spread salam. وَأَطْئِمُ الطَّعَامِ Feed the poor and needy. وَصِلُوا الْأَرْحَامِ Keep ties. وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ وَنَيَامِ Pray during the night while the people are sleeping. تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ بِسَلَامِ You will also enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with peace. My young friends, the Qur'an and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
They keep on promising the believers that they will receive Jannah al-Firdaus as their entertainment in which they will remain forever and ever as long as they believe and after believing they fulfill their obligation to Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by performing good deeds and refraining from evil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised these believers that they will receive Jannah al-Firdaus as their entertainment. The question that I'd like to answer today, my young friends, is what is so special about the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what is so special about the blessings of Allah? That Allah says this is the ultimate reward. And inshallah, what blessings will you and I receive inside the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's a very easy question. But I assure you, the answer to this question is very difficult. And the reason the answer to this question is very difficult, because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the Almighty Allah said, أَعْدَدْتُ لِإِبَادِ الصَّالِحِينَ مَا لَأَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى كَلْبِ بَشَرَ That I have prepared for my pious servant. Such blessings in paradise. مَا لَأَيْنٌ رَأَتْ no human being has ever seen such blessings and such ni'mas. No ear has ever heard with regards to these blessings. And the thought of these blessings has never crossed the mind of any human being. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. And the thought hasn't crossed the mind of any human being. If this is what the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi, the maker of these blessings is saying, then how can I explain the true nature of these blessings? How can I? This is why I can only do my utmost best and give you a rough idea about the blessings of paradise. Why? Because the true nature of the blessings of paradise is inconceivable. It is beyond the comprehension of the human mind. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. The thought hasn't crossed the mind of a human being. Let me give you an example. You know, a child, when he is in his mother's womb, he cannot conceive of anything beyond this. He cannot conceive of the blessings of the dunya. Yet the blessings of the dunya are a reality. We're seeing them. We're living here. We can see them. But when a child's inside his mother's womb, he cannot conceive of these blessings. No matter how hard you try to explain, and you can say to that child while she's in the stomach of his mother, in the womb of his mother, Okay, oh son, very soon you're going to leave this world. And you're going to come to another world. And this other world is a million, million, million times bigger than the world which you're in at this moment in time. And this world has got all types of blessings, all types of fruits, from bananas to guavas to mangoes to pomegranates to leeches to peaches to grapes. There are beautiful houses. Bungalows, palaces, mansions, detached, semi-detached. There are beautiful, tall, lofty buildings. There are mountains, beautiful landscape. All types of drink from mango juice to milkshakes. While that child is inside his mother's womb, no matter how much you explain, that child cannot conceive of the blessings of this dunya. However, when this child is born, and when this child comes into the dunya and with his own eyes he sees the peaches, the mangoes, the leeches and he sees the mango juice and the milkshakes and he sees the Bentleys and the Rolls Royces and he sees the tall lofty buildings the hidden realities of the blessings of this dunya come to perfect light. Likewise my young friends at this moment in time you and I were also in the womb. We're in the womb of the dunya. And no matter how much I explain, you will not be able to conceive the true nature of the blessings of paradise. Yet, 
When you leave this world, and you enter the next world, you enter Jannah, and you see the blessings of Jannah with your own eyes, and you experience the blessings of Jannah, this is when the true nature of the blessings of paradise will come to perfect light. But well, having said this, inshallah, I will try my utmost best to bring Jannah as, as, as close to you as I possibly can through the light of the, and the, uh, through the, light of the Quran and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Let us just begin first with the last person coming out of the fire of hell and the last person going into paradise. Let us just see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for the last person to come out of Jahannam and as a result the last person to go into paradise. Now in order to understand this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you will have to understand the belief of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It is the belief of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that the Kuffar, irrespective of all the good that they may have done in the dunya, because they didn't believe in the Almighty Allah, and they rejected Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is our belief that the belief of the Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, that they will be deprived of Jannah and the blessings of Jannah. And as for the believers, the Mu'mineen, they will be of two groups. There will be those who fulfill their right towards the Creator, they never did any wrong. All the obligations, all the things that were ordained, they did them just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked, just like the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those people who had sinned, who after their sin, they repented, Tawbat al nasut sincere repentance, which was accepted by the Almighty Allah, this is the first group of people. And these people, with the grace and fuzzle and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala straight away. And the second group of people will be people like you and me, the general believers. Those who have done good, but sometimes the shaitan gets the better of us, and we are weak, and we do wrong. Now this second group of people will be under Tahtul Mashi'ah, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to forgive these people, then He is the Ar-Rahman and He is the Ar-Rahim. The most merciful and the most kind. And these people will enter Jannah just like the first group. However, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to hold us to account for all our sins, for, or, or for any one sin that we've committed, then He is the all just. And He will make us pay for the wrong that we did. And He will throw us inside the fire of hell. And you will remain in hell, paying the price of sin and disobedience, as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided. But because you declared the kalima la ilaha illallah, such is the value of this iman and the kalima la ilaha illallah, that once you have paid the price of sin, inshallah you will also join the formal group, and with the grace and mercy of Allah you will also enter paradise. So this last person coming out of the fire of hell and entering paradise is from this second group. Allah has held him to account for the wrongs that he did and as a result of which Allah threw him inside hell. And he's been in hell, paying the price of sin, paying the price of disobedience, paying the price of neglect, paying the price of turning against the teachings of Allah and his Rasul. And then one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow him to leave Jahannam and Allah will allow him to enter paradise. So with regards to this individual, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala who relates, he relates that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, آخر من يدخل الجنة رجل فهو يمشي مرة 
ويكبو مرة وتصفعه النار مرة فإذا ما جاوزها التفت إليها فقال تبارك الذي نجاني منك لقد أعطاني الله الشيء ما أعطاه أحدا من الأولين والآخرين Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala nur alayhi that the last person to come out of hell and the last person to come out of hell and into paradise will be that person who will crawl out of the fire of hell he will crawl he will walk he will stumble he will fall crawling walking stumbling he will leave the fire of hell and he will enter paradise. Now my young friends, see if you can picture this in your mind's eye. And remember, this is the last person coming out of hell and the last person to enter paradise. He's been in the depths of hell probably for millions and millions and millions and millions of years. In the depths of hell, paying the price of sin, paying the price of disobedience, paying the price of neglect. My friends, he's been punished in a manner like never before. He's been tortured in a manner that the human mind cannot even comprehend. Scorpions would sting him. Snakes would bite him. My friends, he was given blood to drink inside Jahannam. He was given pus to drink. He was given boiling water. And when he would drink this water, every organ in his body would melt and the water would come out from the other side. His head would boil and bubble like boiling water in a kettle. He was given zakum to eat. The fire of hell would burn him. And every time his flesh and his skin would burn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would replace the skin and Allah would replace the flesh. And this punishment and this process would continue and continue. And every time the pain would increase, he could never get used to the pain. And he would cry and he would scream and he would yell and he would beg for help. My young friends, there was no respite. So he's been in this condition in the depths of hell for millions and millions of years, paying the price of sin and disobedience. My friends, now the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi is having mercy upon him. The time has come for him to be set free. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the gates of hell. This last person to come out of the fire of hell. Today he can see the gates of hell open. And when he looks at the gates of hell open, my young friends, he will muster the courage to leave Jahannam. He will begin to crawl on his belly. He will begin to crawl for a few yards. And after a few yards, he will make the effort to stand. He now stands and he begins to walk a few yards. He's walking falsely, just like a child when he learns how to walk. A child takes one step, two steps, he falls to the ground. The child gets up again, takes one step, two steps, he falls to the ground. Here, he's walking falsely. The fire of hell will scorch him. He will stumble, he will fall. But again, he can see the gates of hell open today and he will begin to crawl on his belly. He will crawl for a few yards. He will make the effort to stand and walk. With difficulty he will stand. He will take a few steps. He will walk forcingly. The fire of hell will scorch him as he's leaving. Again the Pichara will stumble. He will fall. But today my young friends, he's been there for millions and millions of years. He can no longer tolerate the punishment and torture. He can see the gates of hell open. He can see freedom with his eyes. He is thinking freedom. Today there will be nothing that can stop him from leaving Jahannam. 
unlike this, he will w crawl, he will walk, he will stumble, he will fall, he will crawl, he will walk, he will stumble, and he will fall. Unlike this, he will leave the fire of hell and get outside Jahannam. And now he's come out. He can't believe his own eyes that he's come out of Jahannam. And that when he comes out of Jahannam, he'll turn back at Jahannam and he will glorify Allah and he will praise the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi. And he will be thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever has blessed anyone in the manner that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him. He will think Allah has never allowed anyone to leave Jahannam. And remember, this is the last one coming out of Jahannam. These are the thoughts that is crossing his mind. He'll, he'll turn around to Jahannam and say, Tabaraka alladhi najjani min, lakad a'tani Allahu shay'an, ma a'tahu ahadam min al-awwaleen wal-akhireen. Glorified is Allah, and all praise is to Allah, who has saved me from you. Today Allah has given me something which Allah has never given to anyone, no from amongst the former and no from amongst the latter. All of a sudden, ثُمَّ تُرْفَ لَهُ شَجَرَةٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring a tree before him. And he will have never, ever seen a tree so beautiful. And he can see this tree is out of this world. This is how beautiful it is. And below this tree, he can see water flowing. Remember, he's been in Jahannam for millions and millions of years. Do you think the angels gave him respite? Do you think he had a five minute break, a 10 minute break? He's now out. He can see this tree. He can see the water flowing beneath. He was forced to drink blood and pus and venom of snake. When he would take the pot, the, the flesh of his face would melt inside the pot before he actually put it down inside his mouth. And here he can see the water. You know, the last time he drank water was in the dunya millions and millions and millions of years ago. He'll turn around to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Adnini min hadihi shajara, fali astadilla bidilliha wa ashra min ma'iha. He wants to get to that tree, but he can't. The tree is at a great distance. You know, with difficulty, had he not been with the mercy of Allah, with difficulty, he's just left Jahannam. And when he sees this tree and he sees the beautiful water flowing beneath it, he'll beg the Almighty Allah and say, Oh Allah, I beg you, Adnini min hadhi shajara. Make me closer to this tree so Allah, I can rest and take rest under its shade and drink from its sweet water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn around and say to him, Ya ibn Adam, Oh Ibn Adam, it's so possible that if I make you close to this tree, you'll ask for something else. You'll ask for another blessing. And he will turn on to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, La ya Rabb. No, my Lord. Oh Allah, this is the only thing I want. I beg you. Make me close to this tree so I can shelter from its shade and drink from its water. Oh Allah, He will promise for you are hidu Allah yes alu ghaira. And He will take qasam and oath, Oh Allah, Allah ni qasam. I'm not going to ask you for anything else. Just this one thing, make me close to this tree so I can rest and enjoy the sweet water. وَرَبُّهُ تَعَالَى يَعْذِرُ لَأَنَّهُ يَرَى مَا لَا صَبْرُ عَلَيْهِ When Allah looks at His weakness and His impatience, the Almighty Allah will make him close to this tree and he will come and he will rest for the first time. You Londoners will know this more than me because everyone's working 24-7. We don't even get to see our children. And here he's resting for the first time. He's drunk the sweet water. He's enjoying it. Aram Kisad there, enjoying himself when all of a sudden Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring before him another tree. And the second tree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings before him is millions and millions of times more beautiful than the first. He can see it. And as soon as he sees it, he will become impatient again. He's just enjoyed the rest. He's enjoyed the sweet water. 
the taste is still inside his mouth. And when he sees the second tree, more beautiful than the first millions and millions of times, again he will turn to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh Allah, adnini min hadihi shajara, fa li astadhilla bi dhilliha wa ashr min ma'iha, la as'aluka ghayraha. Oh Allah, I beg you, make me close to this tree. Oh Allah, so I can shelter under its shade and drink from its sweet water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn around and say to him, Ki ibn Adam, Alam tu ahidni alla tas'alini ghayra. You know, just a minute ago, a short while ago, you promised and you took customs. Get custom, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to ask you anything. You took custom and you promised and pledged that you were not going to ask for anything whatsoever. It's so possible again that if I answer, uh, uh, this, fulfill this request of yours and I make you close to this tree, after a short while you'll forget your customs and you'll begin to ask for other things. Again, he'll promise the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He'll promise the Almighty Allah, he'll take custom again. Give Allah this second tree, I beg you. I'm not going to ask for anything else. I beg you, just get me there. The second tree again is at a distance, he can't get there. The Almighty Allah has mercy upon him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings him close to the second tree. Again, he drinks from the sweet water. And you know what? The water flowing beneath this tree is millions and millions times better than the water flowing beneath the first. And the guy is enjoying it. You know, this is a hell of a day for him. And he's sitting under the tree, you know, like a king, enjoying himself. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to play with him. Allah brings before him a tree next to the gates of paradise. And this tree next to the gates of paradise is millions and millions of times better than the first two trees put together. And within a zillionth of a second, he'll forget. You know, when he sees this, you know, when he sees this tree and he sees the beauty of this tree, he'll forget his qasams, his promises, everything he will forget. And like a child, he'll begin to beg again. He turned to Allah, oh Allah, this tree is millions of times better than the other two. Oh Allah, I beg you, make me close to this tree so I can shelter under its shade and drink from its sweet water. Again, Allah will say, what's, what's up with this guy? You know, he's just promises, breaks promises, promises, break promises. Allah will say, look, you just said that you were not going to you know, ask for anything else. Two minutes down the line and you're asking again. It's so possible again if I fulfill your promise and fulfill your desire, you'll begin to ask for something else. And this time, you know what? He'll literally beg like a child. You know, a child, when, you, when a parent has sweets in his hand, a father has sweets, you know, four year old, five year old child, you know, how, you know, how they begin to circle the father for the sweets. And you give him one, he will eat that one. And you say to him, this is the last one now. Off you go. You've had too much for today. Will that child go? No. After he's eaten that one, he'll come and he'll try to open your fingers, your hand. And he'll say, and you'll close it again. He'll say, Abba, I beg you. Abba, please, just give me this one. If you give me this one, Abba, I'm going, I'm not going to ask you again. So this is what a child does. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, Ko Ibn Adam, did you not just promise that you were not going to ask for this, ask for anything else? He'll say, Bala ya Rabb. Oh Allah indeed, oh Allah indeed. I promise. Why well, I beg you, Hadihi, just this once. Hadihi la as'aluka ghayraha. Oh Allah, I beg you just this once, just make me closer to this tree. And I swear by your name again, I will not ask for anything else. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him close to paradise. Make him close to this tree. This tree is right next to the gates of paradise. Now my young friends, he's so close to paradise, so close to Jannah, that the hadith states, فَيَسْمُ أَسْوَاتَ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ That he will be able to literally hear the people of Jannah inside Jannah rejoicing inside the Jannah. He'll be able to hear the sweet voices of the people of Jannah. He'll be able to hear the sounds of his friend Abdullah and Abdurrahman. 
that you used to hang around with, the ones that used to invite him for prayer and he never came. They're already in paradise, they're rejoicing. He can hear them inside paradise. He can hear them happy and rejoicing. And when he hears this, his heart will melt. He will forget all the qasams, he will forget all the promises, and again he will turn to the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi, he will turn to the Almighty Allah, the most merciful and the most kind, and he'll say, Oh Allah, udkhulniha. Oh Allah, I beg you, let me look inside your paradise. Oh Allah, I beg you, let me enter your paradise. Oh Allah, I've come a long way today. Oh Allah, I was in the depths of hell for millions and millions of years. Oh Allah, I was paying the price of disobedience. I was paying the price of neglect. Oh Allah, I was paying the price of going against your teachings, going against the teachings of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah, I was tortured like never before, like no human being was tortured. Oh Allah, I was punished like no human being has ever been punished. Oh Allah, I was forced to drink pus, I was forced to drink blood, I was forced to drink venom of snakes. Oh Allah, the, 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 the features on my face would melt in the pot when I just touched the pot. Oh Allah, my head would boil like boiling water in the kettle. Oh Allah, the scorpions would sting and the snakes would bite. Oh Allah, every time my flesh was burnt, Oh Allah, you would replace it and the pain would intensify. Oh Allah, this was my condition in the depths of hell. And I would scream and there was no one there that could hear me. And I would cry and tears of blood would flow from my eyes. Again, oh Allah, nobody would respond. You were the Arham al Rahimin, that you had mercy upon me. And one day you opened the gates of paradise and you allowed me to leave. Oh Allah, I was so weak that I didn't even know how to leave. That I was crawling, oh Allah, that I made the effort to stand and walk. And I would stumble and the fire of hell would scorch me and I would fall. Oh Allah, walking, stumbling, falling. I left the fire of hell with your help. Oh Allah, prior to this, I never rested. I never drank water before. You were the one that brought a tree before me. I had never seen anything so beautiful as this in my entire life. Oh Allah, I was tired. With difficulty, I left Jahannam. I couldn't get there. I was very impatient. Oh Allah, you were the one that gave me the strength and made me close to this tree. And I drank water for the first time. I rested under a shade for the first time. And I enjoyed this, oh Allah. Oh Allah, then you brought before me another tree. This tree was more beautiful than the first. Millions and millions of times. Oh Allah, I couldn't get that. I turned to you again. You had mercy upon me. And I got to this second tree. Oh Allah, then you brought me, then you brought before me another tree. It was millions of times more beautiful than the first two. It was right next to the gardens of paradise. I couldn't get there. Again, I turned to you and you had mercy upon me. Oh Allah, now I am so close to paradise coming from the depths of hell that I can hear the people of paradise rejoicing inside paradise. I can hear the hurayin of paradise singing for their husbands. Oh Allah, I can no longer bear this. Oh Allah, I can't tolerate this. It is too much for me. Oh Allah, you showed mercy upon me. I beg you, show me this mercy just once more and allow me to enter your paradise. <laughs> allow me to enter your paradise. He is the Arham al -Rahimin. He introduces himself in the Quran. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate and the most merciful. Alhamdulillah, oh, praise to Allah. Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the uh, entire universe. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, the most compassionate, the most merciful. And when this servant of his turns to him in this manner and begs him, Go Allah, Udukhul Niha, I beg you, allow me to go inside. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn to him and say, Ma Yasrini Min, O Ibn Adam, you con man, when are all this questioning and begging going to come to an end? Will you be happy if I give you a place inside paradise twice bigger than the dunya that you came from? Will you be happy if I give you a place in paradise? Remember, this is the last person to come out of Jahannam and the last to enter paradise. What is he in comparison to the Sabiqeen al awwalin Those that spend their entire lives doing good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to him, okay, will you be happy if I give you a place in paradise twice bigger than the dunya that you came from? This guy will not know what has hit him. He will be thinking Allah is playing about with me. And he'll turn around and say to the Almighty Allah, the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi, Oh Allah, you're joking with me? Allah, am I the joke? 
Yet you are the Lord of the heavens and the earth. You are the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi. You are the Lord of the entire universe and you're joking with this weak servant of yours that you're going to give me really a place in paradise twice bigger than the dunya that I came from? Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he began to laugh. Who was narrating this hadith, he began to laugh. And those that were sitting in front of him, he said to them, Ala tas'aluni mimma adhak. Do you not ask me as to why I'm laughing? So they said to Abdullah bin Mas'ud, why are you laughing? He said, because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was relating this hadith, this is when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also began to laugh. And we the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, what makes you laugh? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Min dhihki rabbil alameen. That the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi began to laugh when this Mamuli, this weak servant of his, is saying to the Lord of the universe, Atastahazio minni wa anta rabbul alameen. You're joking with me, yet you are the Lord of the heavens and the earth. At this, even the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi began to laugh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Kinay bai, you're not the joke today. I am the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi. I have the power to do whatever I want. If I've said that you're going to get in a place inside paradise, twice bigger than the dunya that you've come from, that in spite of the fact that you are the last of the Jannatis and the last to come out from the fire of hell, you will have a place inside paradise, twice bigger than the dunya that you have come from. Another hadith which Imam Muslim has recorded in his Sahih. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him to go into paradise, he'll go to paradise. When he goes, he'll look inside paradise and he'll think he's full. To him, he will seem as if he's full and he will come to back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Allah, you told me to go to paradise, but there's no space for little me. Allah will say, Get to paradise. So he's gone again and he's opened the door. You know, I guess it must have been an inferiority complex type thing. You know, when you gather things like this, you see 30, 40 people, everyone feels ashamed. So he's gone in again and again it seemed that he's full. So he's come back, Allah, you're telling me to go inside paradise, but there's no place for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, No place for you? Let me tell me, let me tell you how much place there is for you. For you, there is place in paradise 10 times bigger than the dunya that you have come from. 10 times bigger than the dunya that he's come from. This is for the lowest of the Jannatis. In one hadith, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with regards to the same individual, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, Tamanna, ask for whatever you like. That's what you call winning the lottery, my young friend. That is indeed winning the lottery. You, can you imagine, you're standing before the Lord of the worlds. The being that has the power to do anything, he just says, Kun, be. And within a zillionth of a second for your Kun, it's there. You're thinking something in your head and the thing is already there. This is the being that you're standing before. And he's saying to you, you know what? Tamanna, ask for whatever you like. I'll give it to you. The guy's not going to know what's hit him. So he's standing there before the Almighty Allah and Allah saying, ask, go on, ask for whatever you like. So he's probably thinking, you know what? When I was in the dunya, that Range Rover wasn't too bad, was it? Which one? Allah, you know that Discovery? Which color? Allah, the green one. You want a Range Rover Discovery? Here it is. He'll get it. And you know what, it's not, you know, you, you've heard the story, three wishes. No, there's no three wishes here. Allah will say again, Tamanna, ask for whatever you like. So obviously he's seen the discovery right in front of him. And he's thinking, you know what, it can't get better than this, can it? Or can it? So he's thinking, you know what, Allah? You know what? I went to Dubai, Allah, when I was in the dunya. And I saw the sheikhs. Allah, can you give me a car like the sheikhs? Which shakes? Allah, you know, the Arab shakes. Not the milk shakes. 
So the Arab sheikhs, what car did they drive then? Well, like, you know what? They used to drive these Bentleys and these, you know, Rolls Royces with the engines made from England. Is that what you want? Here you go. Right in front of him. And you know what you're thinking? Is, this is my lucky day. Allah saying again, Tamanna. Ask for whatever you like. You know, he's thinking, you know what? Let me move up a few gears here. And he's thinking, you know what? Nigel Mansell. A Ferrari. A Lamborghini. A Porsche. Is that all you want? Here it is. No three wishes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep on saying, Tamanna. Ask for what you like. He will ask. Allah will say, here it is. Again, Tamanna. Ask for whatever you like. He will ask. Allah will give. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep on saying, Tamanna, Tamanna, Tamanna. He will keep on asking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep on giving. And when he's asked for whatever he can think of, you know what's going to happen after this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, Sal kaza wa kaza. You didn't ask for this. You forgot to ask for this particular item. Ask for it, yeah? He'll ask. Allah will give. But you forgot to ask for this one. He'll ask one as well. He'll ask. Allah will give. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep on reminding him. He will keep on asking. Allah will keep on giving. فَإِذًا قَتَعَتْ بِهِ الْأَمَانِ when he's asked for everything that he can think of and remembered, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, huwa laka wa asharatu All that and ten times as much is all yours. This is the lowest of the jannatis. Can't be bad. You know, for a day's work, my friend, this can't be bad. Now this guy is now looking pretty good. Why? He's got a place in paradise Ten times bigger than the dunya. You know, how big is this dunya? You know, there's already about how many, mil- how many billions have we got so far? Eight? Allah knows best. And there's still, forget this, you know, was it 2.5 families? By the grace of Allah in this dunya, there's plenty of space for another 10 billion. Yeah? So don't go down that line. He's got a place in paradise ten times bigger than the dunya. And he's got all the, you know, the Ferraris are there, the Lamborghinis are there, the Discoveries are there. And now, he's feeling good about himself. And you know what? He'll want to go and meet his friends. We like doing that, don't we? Once we're looking good, what do we do? Go show our friends. That's what people do. Young lads hire cars, good looking cars. And what do we do? Drive around the block. Again? Yeah, just making sure that we have been seen. Yeah, and we take off the hood of the car. Yeah, put on the music and go round and round. And you come back in the evening and they're still going round. <laughs> Everyone's asleep. <laughs> Two o'clock at night. And they're still going. They'll go where the restaurant start thinking there's people still there. Or either they're making the most out of the money that they paid on the car. So you know, we like you. The day day we're looking good, it's no different for the women, especially when they're wearing nice dresses. They want to be appreciated. That's putting it in really nice words. So this guy, you know, the guys that he used to hang around with, because obviously he's thinking, Allah has never given anyone a blessing like this. Yeah? So he's thinking, you know, he's the guy. So he's like, Allah, you know what? I've got everything that I want. Al-Hikni bin Nas. Allah, let me go meet the people. You know, let me go meet my boys. I said, you know what? Go on. Allah will make his day. So the guy now is walking like a king, you know, important. فَيَنْطَلِكُوا يَرْمَلُوا فِي الْجَنَّةِ And he'll roam around in paradise, admiring the beauty of paradise. حَتَّى إِذَا دَنَا مِنَ النَّاسِ غُفِعَ لَهُ قَصْرٌ مِنْ ذُرَّةٍ فَيَخِرُّ صَادِلَةٍ He's walking around, roaming around in paradise. When all of a sudden, a palace made out of a diamond will be brought before him. Can you imagine, Yara, a palace out of a diamond? When he, his eyes fall upon this palace, there will be so much nur and so much light and sparkle coming from this palace that you know what? He'll fall into prostration. And he'll be said to him, 
Oi! What are you doing? You know, in the dunya, you just didn't have time for it, did you? And here in paradise, all you're doing is prostrating. Get out of sajda. And you know, he'll offer an excuse of you. Now he's got caught out. He'll offer, you know what he'll say? He'll say, Raitu Rabbi. I saw Allah. You know, because he's, there was so much nur on the palace, beautiful diamond, he'll say, you know what? I just seen Allah and I want you to prostrate before my Lord. Get out of here. You've seen Allah. Have a good look. It's a palace. You can't blame the guy, yeah? First day in paradise. And it'll be said to him, Innama huwa manzilun min manazili. This is just one. Out of the palaces that, palaces that you've inherited and Allah has got for you, this is just one. There are so many others. He's walking along. Summa yalqa rajulan. He'll meet a guy. And you know when he sees this guy, this guy will be so handsome, so handsome. You know what? Men can be good looking. Yeah, men can be good looking. This guy is that good looking that you know what? He'll be on the verge of prostrating before him. Again, it was like, all your rose. You know, before he gets down, all your rose, stop here. He'll offer the excuse again. You know what? I thought you were one of the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the only reason I'm going to, you know, prostrate before you. He says, never mind angels. Me, ana khazinu min khuzanik wa abdun min abidik. Tahta yadayya alfu qahraman ala ma'ana alayh. Me, I'm just one of your servants. I'm here to serve you. I'm in charge of your servants. I have a thousand servants which work under me. They're just waiting to serve you. Now he'll walk in front of him and he will open the door to his palace. Believe me, you'll forget Buckingham Palace. I know you Londoners, you understand, you're very, mashallah, passionate about Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace, you know, I've got a problem with it, it's a good palace. But believe me, it's nothing in comparison to these guys. So he's opened his palace. And you know what? Everything in this palace will be of diamond. You know, the biggest diamond that well, you and I forget in our lives, we won't even see a diamond. Yeah, but you know, those that are fortunate, how big of a diamond about as big as this? You know, if you look it, yeah, if you look it, as big as this. And here, the roof is of diamond. All the doors are of diamond. The keys are of diamond. Everything is of the same diamond. In front of this, there will be a green jewel and this green jewel will be concealed in a red one. And there will be 70 doors. And every door will lead to a separate room, a different room. You know, not, you know these semi-detaches here where you've got two you know, box rooms and that's about it. That's the reason why you can only have 2.5. Or else you'll know, be living on the street the day after. 70 rooms, my friend. And every room will be made out of a gem. And the color of every gem will be different. And in every room you will find couches. You know, you're not just a king, you are really a king. It will be said to him, you know what, look outside the window. So you look outside the window. It will be said to him, Mulkuka masiratu mi'ati am. You know, the distance that, be, that can be covered in a hundred years. The distance that you can cover when you're on a journey in a hundred years. That's where your kingdom comes to an end. Now, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala who was relating this hadith, and I brought many different versions and narrations. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala said to Sayyidina Ka'ab, Ya Ka'ab, have you not heard what Ibn Ummi Ab, yani Abdullah bin Mas'ud, has just related with regards to the lowest of the Jannatis? If this is the lowest that's receiving all this, then what about those greater in rank? In another narration, in the hadith of Ibn Umar, which Dari Qutni has narrated, with regards to the same individual, it is mentioned, that when he reaches his throne in his kingdom, the guy's gonna sit on his throne, like a king. And then, فَيَسْعَى إِلَيْهِ بِسَبْعِينَ صَحْفَةً لَيْسَ فِيهَا صَحْفَةً مِنْ لَوْنِ أُفْتِهَا يَجِدُ لَذَّةَ آخِرِهَا كَمَا يَجِدُ لَذَّةَ أَوَّلِهَا You know, this guy used to enjoy his food. 
He had a tough time in the dunya. He really did have a tough time in the dunya. He was married to a girl called Jamila. Not that if, if anyone called Jamila here, I haven't got anything against any Jamila. But Jamila was a tough cookie. And Bichara was cooking all the time. Do you understand? Hard day's work, nothing there. Get out the beans, open the can, put it in the microwave. And that's as far as it went. Now he's sitting there like a king, and you know what? 70 trays of gold. The trays will be of gold, 70 trays. And his khadims are bringing them. And every one will contain a dish which is not in the other one. <laughs> what do you think? This guy's going to be out of it. You know, kebabs to kebabs. Yeah? Chicken tikke. Yeah? Biryanis. Prawn biryani. Fish biryani. Yeah, I'm only giving you these names because we just don't know what they're called in paradise. <laughs> do you understand? And you know what tends to happen in the dunya is you normally bring the best stuff at the beginning and you put that down and afterwards it's just the average stuff in paradise, no way. From the first dish to the last dish, everyone will be exceptional and you know what? He will taste and he will enjoy the first just as he will taste and he will enjoy the last. Hell of a meal, yaar. You're thinking, you know what? How long I waited for this? How long I waited for this? And if only had I done more good. Is that a nice bite to eat? Now the servants will bring the drinks. The guava juices and the mango juices. Not with 10% juice in it. No, this is 100% guaranteed. All the shakes. You know, and he'll choose from amongst them whatever he wants to drink. And once he's eaten and once, mashallah, he's had a nice uh, wash down of the food, his servants will say, you know what? azwaja. Let him be now with his wife. Let him be at home. You know, once our mother, Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala, Allah elevate her ranks in paradise, asked a few questions with regards to the Huri'een. This she asked a million dollar question. She asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu wasallam, Anisa'ud dunya afdal amil huri'een. Are the women of dunya superior or the women of paradise more superior? And you were thinking, you know what, you've got rid. You were sad guys. <laughs> well, London's a sad place. The Bradfordians would never think like that. We carry our, we carry our wives. So you know what, she asked the million dollar question. Obviously Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praising the Ur in Ain, you know, verse after verse after verse, so she wants to ask the million dollar question. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, who is most superior? So Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Nisa'u dunya afdal min al-hur al-een ka fadli dhiharati ala al-bitana. That the women of the dunya will be more superior than the Ur in just like the upper garment of a quilt is better than the inner garment of the quilt. So now she's got the answer that she was looking for. By the grace of Allah, I've saved many heart attacks today. <laughs> many heart attacks. You know, from this, my sisters need to learn, look how, how much regard Allah has for them. How much regard Allah has for the believing women. When before Rasulullah came, what was a woman? You know, in the entire world, even in the Western world, they were still debating whether she's a human being. They were still debating whether she was a human being. And in the land of Arabia, they were burying them alive. And this is when Allah, Messenger declared, Allah said in the Quran, Just as men have rights, the women have also rights. And he elevated their ranks in the dunya. And you know what? In spite of the fact that Allah is the best of creators. And Allah has created this creation, the Quran. He didn't let them down in the Akhirah. That even in the Akhirah, in spite of this great creation of Allah, these bandiya, these servants of Allah, will be far superior to this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in Jannah, Allah has elevated them. Just a final hadith, I know I've only told you what the, the, the lowest of the Jannah is going to get. Sayyidina Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala, the latest hadith recorded by Imam Tirmidhi, that on top of this, 
that the lowest jannati, he will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala twice every day. Every morning and every evening, he will be able to see his creator and there is no blessing bigger and better than seeing Allah and acquiring the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in paradise. There is nothing bigger than this. My young friends, if this is what the lowest of Jannatis is going to receive, you and I, Allah willing, inshallah, will not be from amongst the last people to enter paradise. Why? Because we're going to spend our life after this. We will make tawbah, we will ask Allah for forgiveness, and we will try our most best to fulfill our purpose in life, our purpose in creation, by being good human beings, by being good Muslims. And as a result of which, inshallah, we will not be from amongst the latter, we will be from amongst the former, amongst the sabiqeen al awwaleen If this is what the person to enter paradise last was going to receive, then what do you think those that are above him in the rank? And there will be millions and millions and millions and millions of people above him in rank. And inshallah, you and I will also be there. What do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got in store for us? And I conclude on this note, my young friends. It's pointless dreaming. It's pointless dreaming. Dreams mean nothing. Live the dream. You know, the dream that you're dreaming and these blessings that you're going to receive. Live the dream. How are you going to acquire it? There needs to be a plan. What are you going to do as from today to receive these elevated ranks in paradise? You have a short life. You know, after I've gone from here, maybe now, I may be no more, you may be no more. We may leave our, this room, may maybe no more. Tomorrow we may be no more. After that, my friends, it will be too late. Imma il jannati, imma il nar. It will be either towards heaven and hell. And you know what? It's all about tawfiq. Ask Allah for tawfiq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the tawfiq. I ask Allah to give me the tawfiq. Allah give me the tawfiq to act upon what I've said. Allah give you the tawfiq. Wa akhiru dawana. Alhamdulillah.